As an expert in the dental industry, what trends can we look forward to? Well, there's a lot of exciting things that are out. One of the things that we do, it's painless injection. So a patient will come in and they'll be really nervous or there's a dental phobic that'll come in and they're nervous about getting numb. So they don't want to see a syringe and we don't use a metal syringe. We have something that it's almost like a plastic straw. And what I do is I tell the patient, well, we're only going to put a topical um, anesthetic on your tissue. And I put it next to the tooth. And there really is a teeny tiny little needle. And we take this needle that's on the straw because there's no syringe. And we tuck it into, uh, it's called a sulcus. It's a little space between the tooth and the tissue. And what I do is um, I start to inject, but it's computerized. So it, it just goes in drop by drop. And when I'm done, I'll turn. And, I'll, and the patient will look at me and they'll be like, okay, I think I'm ready, give me the Novocaine. And I'm like, you got it already. Well, yeah, patients are really important, but the most important thing is making them feel comfortable. And you I do mean, a great we job. have people that really look forward to going to the dentist. And that's something that I think I've accomplished over the past 30 years. Yeah. And it's so nice when people come in, all our employees are wonderful. I mean, you come in and it is like going to a spa or like having, you know, just a wonderful conversation. They come in and, and it's a very, it's a, it's a very social thing as well. Yeah. And that's exciting. It's really nice. It's so nice for me to see patients that are comfortable, not only to create a beautiful smile, but to create somebody that's really comfortable in the office. I think one of my prized stories is my daughter who's in her third year of dental school. And she worked in the office for um, part-time for a while, and then she came on full-time. And when you have kids, as you know, because a lot of people say to me, they say, did you talk your daughter into going into dental school? And I'm like, well, then you don't have kids. Because as you know, you can't tell your kids what to do. So when she came in, she started following me around and really looking at what was I doing and what did dentistry involve, and she fell in love with it. And it's so exciting to see someone who really loves dentistry as much as I do. She's very much a perfectionist. So maybe I was a mentor to her in the fact that she came in and she observed what was going on. But she, again, you can't tell your kids what to do. So when she decided, I'm going to dental school, I was thrilled. So Dr. Stone, can you tell us, what do you think we can do now to help empower women? Well, teach them. Mm -hmm. And that's really very important. Teach them what to do. When my daughter and I were in Malawi, which is in Africa, we, we were, there was a group of women that were in front of us, and they were really very nervous. They were each from different villages, and they had brought their children with them. And they didn't know what to do, how to take care of their children's teeth so that their children wouldn't have the problems that they were having. So my daughter and I really took the time to explain and show them what to do and how to do it. And that was really interesting for us. But we spent a lot of time, and the women, when they first came in again, were afraid and didn't know what to do. But we gave them the confidence to say, now you know what to do. And we watched every single woman. Now you know what to do. And what you should do now is go back to your village and teach the other women what to do. So they felt empowered. They felt great. Hi, my name is Linda Welbrock, and I am the founder of the Leading Women Entrepreneurs Initiative. Congratulations once again to the top 25 leading women entrepreneurs. This initiative has been incredibly exciting and inspiring. The list of finalists are made up of 150 women. Their estimated combined revenue generation is over $1 billion. They are employing over 10,000 people and they are supporting over 1,800 nonprofits. The impact that these women have had on our state and local communities is absolutely outstanding. The criteria that the women entrepreneurs were judged on include innovation, market potential, advocacy for women, and community involvement. It is my mission to raise awareness for these outstanding leaders and present them as role models to future women entrepreneurs and to the future generation of young girls who are looking for options for their own careers. I believe if we work together and use the power of the media to present these women as icons and as role models, that we can make a cultural shift in today's society. We are opening the nomination process for 2013. If you know a leading woman entrepreneur in your community, you can send the nominations to me at 
linda at leading women entrepreneurs or visit my website for further details again i look forward to seeing you and meeting you in 2013.